Well, it's actually not that different from what you see in other religions. Again, um, if you think back to any representation you've ever seen of the Virgin Mary, you probably will never uh, come across one where she's not wearing some kind of a headscarf, long robes. She looks pretty much like almost a Muslim woman. Uh, when I was growing up, Roman Catholic nuns also dressed very similar to the Virgin Mary. You know, you think of the sound of music, you think of Mother Teresa, who's honored as, you know, a saint. Um, they're always wearing long robes and a headscarf. Uh, you think of Amish women, you think of Orthodox Jewish women. So it's really not that unique to Islam. And you think of little old women when it's raining, or when I was a kid, when they went to church every Sunday, they would also wear some kind of a head covering. And it's only been recently that Christian women have kind of moved away from that. It is actually mentioned in Corinthians that a woman who prays uh, uncovered, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's something that is, is not looked well on. And that's kind of the source of that. And the same thing for Orthodox Jewish women, either covering their head with a scarf or with a, a wig. So the way that, again, Islam looks at covering the head is that it's a continuation of an existing practice. And the verse says, tell the believing women to draw their head covers. The word in Arabic is khimar. It isn't actually the word that is commonly used today, hijab. Uh, a khimar is specifically a head cover. So it doesn't say, you know, go out and cut a piece of cloth and put it on your head. Because, obviously, uh, it's speaking to the time when all women wore a head cover. But it's telling them, draw that head cover over your chest or over your neck. And the explanation of that verse is that prior to Islam, women used to wear a head cover, but they would put it to the back. And that Islam just said, you know, cover your neck as well. So it wasn't inventing the head cover, it was just completing the way that women wore it. And the other verse that talks about dress for Muslim women is tell the believing women to draw their outer garments, uh, jadabib is the Arabic word, to their feet so that they will be recognized and not harassed. And so here you see kind of the reasons behind the covering. It is identity, just like you find in some religions, you know, Jewish men wear yarmulke, Sikh men wear a turban, uh, Muslim women wear the head car scarf and the, the outer garment as a way of kind of identifying themselves and to prevent any kind of harassment. And Muslim women also view it as a way of, to dignify themselves, to raise themselves above any kind of uh, s physical representation or value that society often puts upon women. You know, if one looks at common uh, billboards, advertisements, covers of magazines, 99% of the time they are using women rather than men or children, um, generally not fully clothed to sell their products. And we see this across the board. So it's to move away from that representation and to bring women to a level where they're relating with people of the opposite gender more as brothers or sisters, which is actually how Muslim men and women respond to each other. And as such, um, many Muslim women view it as, on the contrary, not oppressive, but something that is very liberating, where they're not worrying constantly about how they look and uh, facelifts and makeup and doing their hair and they can just go about their business doing what they need to do.